Precious one, today we'll look at questions like, if I pray and I don't see the manifestation, what do I do? And divine guidance. Hello and welcome to Time with Bishop Charles. I am Bishop Charles Ajina Sari. This is where we take your questions and I try to bring you answers, either your questions by Facebook, Twitter, SMS, email, LinkedIn, or what avenue you have. But beloved, we'll look at questions on prayer that you have sent me. You will never be the same. Bishop Charles Ajinasari's books are a must-read for every Christian everywhere. Easy to understand, yet deeply edifying and thought-provoking, his books touch on important issues facing the modern Christian today, such as evangelism, money, prayer, marriage, addiction, sex, and etiquette. Find the answers. Visit azaliabooks.com as well as Perez Chapel Bookshop, Jowlo Junction, Accra, and other leading bookshops. Welcome back. Today we have questions like, Mrs. Obey, if I pray for someone's healing or deliverance and it does not manifest, how do I explain it to the people? It depends only on God. He chooses to heal the person instantly. Or perhaps once the person leaves for the house, that person can receive the healing instantly. So it's God that works. You know, he works in mysterious ways. We can't always know for certainty. The fact that I pray for someone doesn't necessarily mean he or she should receive the healing instantly or guarantee. Mrs. If you pray for someone and there is no manifestation of their healing, this is what you can do. Remember that you are not a healer. And if you are not a healer, then if there is no manifestation, there is nothing you can do. Also, don't forget that Jesus never said, when we pray for the sick, we will see the manifestation. What he said in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 was that we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Recovery is a process, or recovering is a process. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, the Bible tells us about King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was sick nigh unto death. He called unto God, and God sent the prophet Isaiah to tell him, you are going to die. Hezekiah turned and faced the wall and said, God, I've been faithful to you. I've done this, that, that, that. He had things he had done. He said, God, I don't want to die. And God gave him 15 more years. But God sent Isaiah to go and tell him to get figs and then do something to the figs and put it on the boil which he had. And Hezekiah recovered. And so healing can be instantaneously and healing can be continuous. There are times we think that once there is no manifestation immediately, the people have not been healed. In my ministry, I've seen people who came and they weren't healed at the service. They went home and saw their healing. Some on the way going, they get healed. Some while they are waking up from bed. If, in fact, even some after two weeks, they've seen their healing. I remember I spoke in Foursquare Gospel Church, Nigeria, in their national convention. There was this dear man who saw me pray for the deaf and dumb. He came with his 12-year-old son. Many deaf and dumb were healed and they could hear and speak. His son didn't see a manifestation. I said to them, whilst you are going, you will be healed. As you go, you will be healed. He said two weeks later, he was sleeping when suddenly he heard somebody nudging him. When he opened his eyes, it was his son standing beside him and shouting, Papa, Papa, Papa. That was it. It took two weeks for the manifestation. And so when you pray for people, 
Just believe God. Trust God that once you have prayed, your part of the agreement is to pray. God's part is to do the healing. And so if you don't see the manifestation, don't worry. This is Sarah Jane from Nigeria. She says, when I pray for direction concerning a particular problem, I cannot tell if the voice I hear subsequently is that of God, my own voice or the voice of the devil. How can I tell the difference? If a voice should talk to me, I will first of all want it to identify itself. And I will want it to quote to me scripture to let me know exactly what voice I'm talking. The devil can never quote scripture which is true. He always quotes scripture which is contrary. So first of all, you have to know the word of God to know if the spirit that is talking to you first of all is of God. So if you don't know the word, you will not know if it's deceiving you or not. Well, Sarah Jane, hearing the voice of God is a subject that I'll be dealing with in a particular month, God willing, either this year or as the days go by. But there are many ways by which we hear the voice of God. Today, I want to quickly give you four ways by which you can know the voice of God. In fact, I'll give you five. The first way is by your human spirit. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. God is a spirit. So if he's going to lead you or guide you, he will lead you by your human spirit. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says that the spirit of a man is the, or the spirit, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So if God is going to lead you, your candle that gives you illumination is your human spirit. So he will give you a witness in your spirit. When we say God will guide you by your spirit, that is a knowing that you know, that you know that you know that this is what God is saying. There are decisions you want to take and you know inside you, this is it. This is the decision. It is God leading or guiding you by your human spirit. The second way by which God will guide you is through the scriptures. As you read the scriptures, God will quicken a word to you and show you how you must do it. But if God, if God is going to guide you by the scriptures, you need to be studying the scriptures. And as you study the scriptures, he will guide you or he will quicken that word to you. But don't be like that guy who was saying uh, he was going to take his Bible and then the page he will open. It means God is guiding him. So he opened the first page and when he opened, he said, and Judas killed himself. Then he closed it again and he opened. And when he opened, he said, what you must do, do it quickly. Don't do that because you might have a wrong way of knowing the guidance of God. The third way by which you know God's guidance is by prophecy or by a prophetic utterance. So any prophecy or prophetic utterance that you receive concerning your life, it must line up with the scripture no matter who the prophet is what do i mean if you receive any prophecy that is contrary to the word of god if you receive a prophecy that tells you to go and steal it is not from god if you receive a prophecy that says divorce your husband or divorce your wife and marry somebody else that is not of god why because the scripture says what god has joined together let no man put asunder so prophecy should line up with the word of god and so god at times guides us through prophecy or prophetic utterances. And the fifth way by which God guides us is through circumstances. There are times the circumstances, he keeps giving you circumstance, circumstantial evidence or he keeps showing you by the circumstances that this is the way you must go. You remember God had been speaking to Jonah to go to Nineveh and Jonah wouldn't go to Nineveh. He decides to take a ship and go to the opposite direction. Whilst on the ship, there was a storm. He went down the ship so that he would shut his ears and be sleeping. Still, the wind was boisterous. It got so bad, they had to pack all the things in the ship and throw them in the sea to make it lighter. Hey, that would be serious. So can you imagine 
you have imported your things from China. And somebody, because he's disobeying God, because he's good or he's on the ship, then you are in trouble. May that never happen to you. What I'm saying is that you can follow people into divine judgment. There are some people who have judgment on their heads. Don't follow them. But then when the, Jonah noticed all those things, he told the captain of the ship, throw me into the sea because this is my cause. The captain didn't want to commit murder, so he will not throw Jonah. And things got worse. Finally, they threw Jonah into the sea and then a whale swallowed him. But the whale vomited him on exactly at Nineveh. What I want you to understand here is that God used the circumstances to show Jonah, this is my will for you. You want to take a, a, a step and every door seems to close to you. You have prayed that the doors will open and the more you pray, the more they close. Could it be that God is saying, don't go in that direction? There are things you want to do and suddenly all hell breaks loose. Could it be that God does not want you to take that decision? And so there are times when circumstances work against you. You need to find out whether God is in the circumstances. Because there are times God is in the wind. There are times he is in the fire. There are times he is in the earthquake. And there are times God is in a still small voice. And that is why you need to learn to listen to the still small voice of God. May God guide and direct you. Beloved, don't turn off your dial. We have some more questions. Get to the end of this program. We will be right back. Bishop Charles Aginasari's books are a must read for every Christian everywhere. Easy to understand yet deeply edifying and thought provoking, his books touch on important issues facing the modern Christian today, such as evangelism, money, prayer, marriage, addiction, sex, and etiquette. Find the answers. Visit azaliabooks.com as well as Perez Chapel Bookshop, Jowolo Junction, Accra, and other leading bookshops. Precious one, welcome back. Beloved, we are dealing with the subject of prayer. And I have a number of books on prayer. One of them is The Power in Prayer, Taking Your Blessings by Force. Get this book, it will change your life. Another is The Impact of Prayer, How to Win the Invisible War. In fact, there is another one, which is Ambassadors of Heaven. Ambassadors of Heaven show you how to take what belongs to you how to be able to allow things on earth and it's allowed in heaven to disallow them on earth and is disallowed in heaven. We want to take the next question from Sam Ochre Kumasi. He says, is it okay to ask for specific things from God or do I just pray that his will be done in my life? The Bible says these things that uh, you, you ask not because you do not pray. You pray, but you pray amiss. You could pray amiss. But then you should, lead by, you should be led by the Holy Spirit to be able to know specific things that we should pray for. And It's okay to ask because the Bible said, ask and it shall be given unto you. So you should ask. But then whilst asking, you also pray that um, His will should be done. His perfect will should be done. Because you can see something to be right, but for God it's not right because you have another plan for us. So you just have to ask for the will of God to be done in our life instead of our own will to be done. Because we don't know tomorrow what God knows tomorrow for us. Sam, if you are going to pray that the will of God be done in your life, then you must know the will of God. When Jesus was praying, Father, let this cup pass away from me. But Lord, if it's not your will, let your will be done. He knew the will of God. He knew that the will of God was for him to go to the cross. And how do you know the will of God? You know the will of God from the word of God. God and his word, they are one. So if you go into the scriptures, the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If you ask according to the will of God, he will hear you. But it's important, Sam, 
to remember that if your prayer is going to be answered, you've got to be able to ask specifically. Don't just pray in general terms. If you pray in general terms, you may not get answers to prayer. Some have said, but God knows everything. Yes, he knows. But if you don't ask, if you don't tell, you see, God, God, God is, is I don't want to say gentleman because he's bigger than a man. God is, God is in a class of his own. But he does, God will not do anything for you without your permission. You, you, you've got to ask him. In fact, there, there's, there's, in Mark chapter 10, the Bible tells us that Jesus was passing and blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the wayside from verse 47. And blind Bartimaeus began to scream, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus asked that blind Bartimaeus be brought to him. When blind Bartimaeus came, he was blind. Jesus saw he was blind. But he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said, that I may see. I understand Jesus. I've been in the healing ministry for 30 something years, since 1983. And in these 30-something years, I've seen a lot of... I remember in one of my meetings, there was a man who came blind in the meeting. When he came to the front for me to pray for him, and I asked him, what do you want Jesus to do for you? He said, I want my marriage to be fine. My obvious, if I were to just go ahead and pray for him, my obvious was to pray for his blindness to be healed. But that was not what he was looking at. He wanted his marriage to be healed. I, I, I've had all kinds of people come into my meetings and the obvious was not what they were looking for, for God to touch. And that is why you don't easily have to conclude when people come into a meeting and you don't see the manifestation of what they came, what you are seeing on them as being healed. Because maybe the man or the woman sitting there that you are thinking this is what they want, it's not what they want. And so it's very important to be specific. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray. So the whatsoever, specific, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have it. So you've got to be specific in your prayer. If you are not specific, God, when he does it, how do you know that he has done it? It's very important for you to be specific. Yes, Timothy from Koforidia. Timothy says, if a spirit from which I need to be delivered oppresses me, can I pray for myself? Wow, Timothy, I love this question. Yes, you can. First of all, the Bible says, know thyself. Two, the Bible has given us power in the word against any principality, be it spiritual, physical, emotional, sexual. If you know the word, you speak to the demon and command it out of you by the power that God has given us. He says, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy, not some. That means in every area of your life, it says the power within you is greater than the power outside. There is what we call in deliverance, self deliverance. And Timothy, this is a book I did titled Trouble in Hell, Defeating Satan and His Demons. In this book, I talk about Satan, I talk about his army, the ranks they have, I talk about demonic doorways, doorways by which the devil can come into your life. I talk about how to cast out devils. And Timothy, in there, I talk about self-deliverance. Self-deliverance is praying for you yourself to be delivered because there are some things that you can also pray. It's like praying for yourself to be healed. Jesus said you will lay hands on the sick. They will recover. Lay hands on the sick. He didn't say only others will lay hands on you. But you will lay hands on the sick. That includes you. So if you are sick, you can lay hands on yourself and pray and you would recover. I want to take this from Eugenia. Eugenia is saying, does God listen to the prayers of sinners? Eugenia Choco. Does God listen to the prayers of sinners? Yes, Eugenia. God listens and hears the prayers of sinners, which is basically, Lord, forgive my sins. Jesus told the story of two people who went into the temple to pray. 
One of them was a publican, that is, a sinner. Another one was a Pharisee. When the Pharisee got into the temple, he began to hit his chest. You see, God, you know that me, that's it. You know, God, that's it. You know, God, that's it. I mean, he was behaving like some of these tough guys around. And then there was this man who was a publican. A publican was a recognized sinner, a recognized cheat, a recognized troublemaker in the land. And he couldn't lift up his head. He began to his chest. He said, God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, the Lord listened to the prayer of the sinner. If the sinner will pray, God, forgive me my sins, God will hear and answer. But if you, if you don't ask for forgiveness of your sins as a sinner and you want to pray other types of prayer, God will not hear. Because Psalm 66 verse 18, the scripture says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He says, who will be able to lift up his holy, uh, who will be able to lift up his hands and stand in the presence of God? He says, he who has clean hands and he who is holy. If you live in sin, you can't pray for God to hear you. If your sins have not been forgiven, you can't pray for God to hear you. In fact, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, he says, if anybody is an adulterer, a fornicator, a thief, a homosexual, a lesbian, if anybody is effeminate, he says that those people will not have or they would even be disinherited from the kingdom of God. If you are disinherited from the kingdom of God, God cannot hear and answer that prayer. If we are going to pray for God to hear and answer us, then we have got to live a holy and a righteous life. It leads me to my last question for today. And it's from John, John Prempe Takrady. He says, I know the importance of prayer, but I am unable to exercise the discipline for it. I find this true for many people. How do I go about making a change? Everything has a beginning, so I should start praying when I have a quiet time. So I can pray for one minute, two minutes, and after that tomorrow also I can add, if I yesterday I prayed for two, two minutes, tomorrow I, I can add two minutes more, more and continue to pray. So it, it, it can bring a, a change in my prayer. The Holy Spirit is ready to, to, to answer your prayers. So ask for the spirit of self-control and then ask him to help you pray. John, in the conclusion of Power in Prayer, I talk about five simple steps that summarizes for you how you can discipline yourself. Five simple steps that summarizes for you how you can discipline yourself in prayer. Number one, if you are going to be effective in your prayer, I say get a place to pray without being disturbed or distracted. Jesus, in Mark chapter 1, always went to a solitary place that the disciples knew to pray every morning. Number two, set aside a specific time when you are going to pray every day. Let your family and friends know that at such a time, you are not to be disturbed or interrupted. Number three, make time to commune with God in prayer as the most important aspect of your life. Prayer is very important and make it very important in your life. Number four, make a strong commitment not to allow anything or anyone to take the place of your time alone with God. Your time, you know, today in the days we live in, when people are praying, their phone is on and they are praying on, oh, then you hear, grin, 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 and these days there are songs. The song will, you know, you sing some song will be, and then they will take the phone and say, hey, Charlie, I'm praying, oh, uh, when I finish praying. Oh, but you are talking to God and you are praying, oh, and then when you finish, no. Number five, shut everything out and bind every hindering spirit. And next week, we'll be looking at hindering spirits. We would be looking at hindering spirits. Because, well, <laughs> beloved, God wants to hear our prayer. When we pray, he's a prayer answering God. If we don't pray, he won't move. Prayer is the only thing that moves the hand of God. You want to pray. You want to move his hand on your behalf. Don't forget, John Wesley said, somebody said to John Wesley, John Wesley, 
Why do you keep saying that these are answers to prayer and keep sharing testimonies? John Wesley said, I wouldn't even have had the coincidences that you are talking about if I hadn't prayed. Beloved, this week you want to experience more coincidences in your life because you are going to pray. Let us share a word of prayer. If you are sick in any part of your body, lay your hand where you are hurting. If the issue has to do with your whole different parts of your body, put your hand on your forehead. And if you are believing God for anything whatsoever, put your hand on your forehead. If it's possible, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I commit these viewers into your hands. I pray that, Lord, you will touch them and meet them at their point of need. I pray that you will visit them, those that are sick, heal them, their eyes, their ears, their back, their neck, every growth. I cast it to die at the roots. I speak that from the crown of the head, the soles of the feet, they be made every way to all. I pray for marriages. I pray that you will intervene in those marriages. I pray for those believing for children. You will intervene for them. I pray for those looking for a breakthrough for their visa. Those looking for a breakthrough for the ticket that they are looking for. I pray those believing for their marriage partner to surface. I pray that you give them the victory. Those believing to pass their exam. Bring to their remembrance what they have studied. That they will have a testimony to your praise and glory. And Lord, we remember this nation. We pray that you will touch our president and his vice. You give them wisdom. We pray for the cabinet ministers. You will guide them. They will take decisions. That will be a blessing to us. We remember parliament that they will make laws that will benefit this nation. And we bring the judiciary before you. They will, Lord, interpret the laws and, and act justice to your praise and glory. We pray for every citizen in this nation. We pray that you will bless our homeland, Ghana, and make, us, make it great and strong. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Precious one, don't forget to keep sending me your questions through Twitter, through Facebook, email, SMS, LinkedIn, any way by which you can send the questions. Keep them coming. Next week, same time, God willing, I'll come your way. I love you with the love of God. Jesus loves you.